So, uh, what have the last two weeks been like in, uh, in Spain and getting experience all that? Yeah, it's been good. I mean, I've been fortunate enough uh, in my career. It's you know, the fourth or fifth time I've been in Spain, so uh, it's always good to go over there. Uh, it's always a little bit nicer when it's uh, when you've uh, finished your season as far as uh, you can enjoy yourselves a little bit more. Um, so it's a good mix of both uh, soccer and getting, getting some matches in. Obviously, you know, celebrating uh, Marcos uh, was, was fantastic to be a part of that. And, uh, you know, just getting to, to see uh, a lot of the good cities in Spain. I mean, we hit uh, Valencia, Barcelona, and Madrid. So you're doing a pretty good, uh, pretty good to do that in 10 days. So it was good. Did you expect that kind of, uh, I guess, atmosphere at the Mestalla for the for Santa's game? And, and Looked on TV or my computer like there was a ton of people in the stands. Yeah, I mean, look, he, the guy's been at that club forever, and obviously he's a legend for them. I don't think you get a, a gate named after you if uh, they don't hold you in high regard. So, uh, he's won uh, the European Championship and played for the national team. And obviously, what he did for that club was uh, fantastic, and he's continued to do the same thing for us. So, uh, it's not a surprise that. Uh, you know, that they, they got the turnout that they did uh, for him, and for him it was, it was fantastic, and I think, you know, he deserved every bit of it. Speaking to several of the players, they always speak about going to Europe, and uh, the treatment the team gets under the Cosmos banner. Do you find that to be the case? Is it different from other times you've found MLS teams? Yeah, I mean, people certainly know who you are. Um, you know, I think we found that uh, when we were in England uh, for preseason, everybody knew who we were. That's not always the case when you're there with uh, an MLS team. I mean, I've been in Spain with, with Colorado, and they were like, oh, okay, MLS, they know what that is, but they don't know Colorado from Columbus, you know what I mean? Uh, maybe they know some of the bigger clubs, but uh, obviously the game's growing, and, and that's is starting to change and evolve a little bit, but for sure the, the history of this club speaks for itself, and when you have the players that have played here, uh, obviously people are going to take notice. Like, what do you, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, I was just about to say, what, what do you think will be happening now for not only for yourself, but maybe possibly the team, you know, I guess how do you stay prepared mentally, gearing up for the spring season and stuff? Yeah, I mean, right now is uh, obviously to try to stay fit, um, you know, as much as possible, but at the same time, taking some time to yourself and with your family. Um, enjoy the holidays, but don't enjoy them too much. Um, for me, personally, it's just uh, getting away from the game a little bit. Uh, more, more, not only physically, but just mentally, you know. Um, this is something we do every day for, you know, nine, ten months out, out of twelve. So uh, to take that month and a half or whatever it is to just kind of recharge your batteries and, and refresh your mind, it, it's nice. And then when uh, preseason starts, you're ready to go. When you look back at this season and considering that everybody came pretty much from different teams, except for you and Carlos, nobody played together. Does it make it? Does it seem even more impressive now that? The, the amount of things that you guys were able to accomplish? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, for sure it's impressive. You don't see it too often, um, if ever. I think probably the best example is probably Chicago Fire when they came into MLS. But, uh, you know, like you said, only Carlos and I were guys that had played together. And uh, we have a lot of young guys and not even the stuff on the field, but getting things organized off the field with a training facility and locker rooms. and. So there's a lot of things that could have distracted us, but credit to the club uh, for getting us stuff sorted out quickly uh, to where we, we felt at home right away and the, you know, if there was ever anything we needed, it, it was usually taken care of promptly and uh, it made, you know, allowed us to put our full concentration on the field and I think you see from game one to the, you know, to the end that we kept getting better and better and uh, that's all you can really ask for. Uh, I think as a coach, that's what you want it's your team to, to start off good, but to continue to grow. And I think uh, we did that and we began to gel and understand each other, understand the way Gio and the guys want us to play. So all those things came together and at the end of the day, we won the championship. So I don't think anybody's too disappointed. <laughs> What's the uh, one thing that you learned now that you've completed your first NASL season about the league, about the style of playing, about the, the team itself? Yeah, I mean, you know, it's... It's not as easy as probably people think it is, for sure. Uh, I mean, you know, from my time in MLS where we played a lot of NASL teams in Open Cup, they were never easy games. Obviously, they're always up for the games because uh, they, they want to prove that they're 
they're not Division Two or whatever it is. Um, so the, the league's difficult. Um, going on the road and playing in front of other people's fans is it's, it's the same if it's MLS, NESL, whatever league. Um, the distractions are there. Uh, you're not always as comfortable, maybe. So, um, and I think you see now with the more teams that are coming to the league and you know, some of the guys who are. Uh, taking jobs uh, with those teams, um, you know, it, it's good for soccer in America. That not only uh, now we have, we're establishing, you know, two solid leagues. Talk about uh, Coach Gio. He's very interactive. Just talk about that and what it means for you as an athlete to have somebody that's out there with you and teaching you. Yeah, no, it's good. I mean, I've had a bunch of different coaches and various styles. So, you know, you, you get used to whoever who's in charge of you. Obviously, Gio likes, uh, he takes a pretty hands-on approach. And um, I think uh, it's good. You know, I think the guys, obviously, everyone feels comfortable with him. He's, uh, I would say he's a player's coach. You can always talk to him. Uh, you know, I think the whole staff is very good. Um, out of all the teams I've been on, it's probably one of the best staffs. Uh, I mean, if you just look at their experience alone as players, it, it speaks for itself. But um, they're all uh, probably you know young in their coaching career to say, and they're all evolving. So you know they're they're not closed-minded by any means. Uh, they're they're willing to listen to, to us if we have suggestions, or and always asking us as well uh, what our thoughts are. And I think that's a good sign that. You know, as a player, you're always looking to improve, and, and for Gio and the staff, the, they're saying the same to, to me and the team. Look, we, we want to improve. If there's something you think we can do better, then let us know, and uh, I think that's been a big part of our success. All right, last one.